Welcome back to another almost daily live chess. Oh, I've got a good opponent. A good sport. Okay, so playing C4. Now this is the longest time control I've played yet. Alright, against C4, I think I'm going to play E6. Looking for an early D5. We could end up transposing into some weird semi-slav triangle. I say weird because usually d5 comes before c6 and e6 and I know I'm gonna be making a lot of pawn moves right out of the opening you know but in these systems you can get away with that because it's so secure now we're playing someone who's over 1800 again hopefully we don't get a repeat of last game oh don't even let's not talk about that <laughs> we're looking to redeem myself here hopefully I can get my move 8 this time so yeah, this is the longest time control that I've played yet. Uh, I might have to edit out some time here where we're just thinking. So this is 20 minutes plus 10 seconds per move. So he takes... I'm going to take with the C-pawn. Didn't appear to be too ambitious for white. So I think we can safely say I'm going to make it past move 8. Uh, knight f6... He's got that e5 square. Hmm. What will I do about that? Well, I don't have to flinch just yet. There's no knight e4 for white. Alright. So the nice thing about him capturing is my knight can come to c6 and capturing on d6, uh, d5. So I do have knight c6, but I know in a lot of these openings, the knight plays to d7, reinforcing this knight, and hoping for e5, which can also be accomplished from here too. I can free up my knight with bishop e7, or I can just play bishop to b4, pinning the knight. Bishop d6 looks pretty ambitious, uh, not immediately too appealing with that. I gotta watch out for my king, so quick development is important. I gotta get castled soon. Because of queen and bishop checks on the on those light squares. So it's also bishop d7. So all these moves I'm talking about are are okay. I'm just trying to think of what kind of position I want to enter. Alright, I'm gonna do this. Keeping his pieces away from b5 for the moment. Alright, that's that's a good move. I think only now will I play here. So um, there's no way he can kick this bishop away immediately. <clears throat> and now once again he can do that. Play queen b6 with pressure on the pawn. Not dangerous pressure though. Um, let's see. Castle, I think, is fine. I have to think about if he does play knight to b5. Uh, I wasn't recording good audio earlier, I'm sorry, but I just got my new microphone on. I realized I didn't hit record, <laughs> so I guess now I did. All right, queen there. Now I really want to play queen b6. If he takes, I take, but then my queen side is destroyed, so I'm not really doing that, I guess. Hmm, yeah, that's not too simple could sacrifice the b-pawn play <clears throat> knight c6 queen takes rook b8 then I win his b-pawn I get my rook on the seventh my knight's defending the pawn that's seriously something to consider it justifies my play let me look at that again knight c6 queen takes b7 he will have bishop here with so knight c6, bishop b5, I 
Rook B8. Bishop takes knight. B takes. Yeah, that's fine for me. So I think that if I do end up playing <coughs> knight C6, he probably will take the pawn. Then I play my rook here. The queen moves and I... Yeah, that, that looks fine for me. I think I'm going to go into that. Maybe my opponent won't go and take the b-pawn. So yeah, the reason I went into that line where I go into some tactical position is because how, do, how else do I justify playing my bishop here? I mean, it doesn't do anything, but now my bishop does do something. Defending the knight. If he takes that knight, though, I, I didn't even look at that. If he does take that knight and my queen takes, then after queen here, my bishop's hanging, which actually is pretty bad for me. Man, I did not look at that. Bishop takes knight is probably good. Giving up that nice dark square bishop in exchange for winning my b7 pawn. I don't know if g takes is even good. I guess with all his pieces on the queen side, that's not so terrible. I'm glad he didn't do that because that might have been pretty good for him. Whoops. <coughs> so what about queen a5 now? Queen a5. He might have to just play his knight back. Because queen a5, if he moves his king or does something blocking with rook, let's say, let's say rook c3, then I play knight takes pawn. Oh, no, I don't, because then knight takes. So I, I could move my knight, though. Oh, I could play knight e7 uncovering another attacker on this piece but now his his bishops also on there so never mind just an idea i want to play knight a5 a bit i'm a little bit behind in development but maybe i do play queen a5 just to connect the rooks i have to do something about this bishop and my bishop's hanging all right, I guess I'll passively back up a little bit, but <clears throat> my point is that his knight isn't too dangerous here. And I'm unpinning this guy. I'm going to be playing, I could be playing, my knight to e4 at some point. I don't want to give up this bishop so, so much, though. Maybe I play, at some point, h6, bishop back, g5, bishop back, then knight e4, where there's no bishop takes bishop. Which I guess isn't positionally, I mean, it's not tactically a bad thing because my queen's getting back off the back rank and, you know, I've got these dark squares for my queen, but positionally it is bad. My dark square bishop is guarding a lot of squares in my camp. Alright, this knight can't stay here forever. I gotta do something about that. Still could play my queen to this square and then rook c1, uh, c8. Let's go for it. Whoa, I also have bishop b5. I forgot all about that <clears throat> uh, before. All right, we're just going to kick this knight away. I can't tolerate that knight there too long. I'm going to keep his pieces out of my camp, <clears throat> make him commit to doing something with this bishop. I guess backing it right up is fine. Oh, he's going there. I'm kind of happy to see that. So I've got knight a5. Let's go with it. Well, I want to get a rook here first. I gotta watch my b-pawn as well.
All right, B5. <clears throat> Gaining more space. Protecting my B pawn. Looking to play rook C8. I'm investing a lot of my time out of the opening because I don't want to be left with a bad position against a strong player. And the 10 second increments are nice. So I could play b4 sometime, making knight e4 even better. You could also play bishop b4. But my knight doesn't look so good here anymore, only being defended by my bishop. So my pawns are doing a good job boxing out his light square bishop. They're also boxing mine out. But once again, it is doing something good here now. Oh, knight there. Him taking is okay. I think. Do I play knight takes? Pawn takes? Knight here? No. Knight takes, pawn takes. Hmm. Knight a5. This queen doesn't have a lot of great squares. Alright, knight a5. <clears throat> I don't want to allow capturing right away. If I play my bishop back, this rook doesn't look happy. Well, okay, I'll play my bishop back. <clears throat> this is temporary because then I'm going to be playing... I could play knight d7 to get my bishop back out into the play. Yeah, rook c8 I think is good. Alright. Alright, I'm just coming here. I need to get my pieces off the back row. And I need to do something about this knight on e5. Plus I need to play quickly. So, I accomplished all those things with that last move. Still have 8 minutes and 15 seconds. Plus the 10 second boost on my clock. <coughs> double on the C file before he does hopefully once this knight's gone I could play well I don't know about rook C6 maybe could play F6 F6 E5 I want to improve my pieces more before I do that, I think. Well, after f6, my bishop has <coughs> a new diagonal. Aha. Seeing that, I'm doing this now. And playing knight here. Once again, improving my piece. So this is a maneuvering game. I wonder how bothersome bishop a3 would be for him. I'm going to go and play it. <clears throat> and 
I'm thinking knight b4 with some queenside pressure getting him off of the c-file if he plays rook c2 actually he might be uh, he might have a hard time keeping that knight he might have to drop the exchange at this rather innocuous point in the game is he gonna play knight b1 after knight b1 I just take his rook yeah Schustenberg might be in some trouble rated 1836 he's got a, a good five minutes on me but I think I got the exchange out of that little tactic removing the defender exposing that c3 knight not sure how sensitive this microphone is but my dog is barking in the background his name's Woofy in case you were wondering so what could my opponent be considering probably looking to find the least of the evils he can't just give up the knight for nothing he can't play like rook d2 <coughs> which is why knight b1's bad um, and if he moves the knight anyway I do have two pieces hitting the rook so yeah this is really rough for my opponent that's what you gotta do as black you gotta maneuver and maneuver and squirm around in your camp fight for some space okay so he plays there maybe wanting to get his queen attacking me somehow so let's waste no time take that exchange oh no that's no good for him I just play here and then I win another piece he put his queen into the, a pin ouch yeah and the Slav defense I don't think white I mean black usually gets such excellent queenside play I guess it can happen but okay yeah I guess the the point is black is very versatile out of the opening rook takes looks pretty good my bishops misplaced over there so in this rather closed position it's gonna be hard for his dark square bishop to hit my rook so aside from that he doesn't he can't really make any threats so do I play bishop a3 just blocking up his queen side or do I play bishop d3 trying to trade off his one of his only good pieces so I can play queen c7 alright let's just consolidate if possible if he attacks my rook with his queen I didn't consider that immediately but I have a couple options no I really only have one option I might have to back my bishop up again oh well no no big deal no because then he plays pawn here So yeah, if he attacks my rook, I'm gonna, I might have to passively back my rook up, sadly. So he's threatening to take the pawn. So I'm going to take the bishop. My light square bishop's in my own way gotta play bishop to oh he's gonna get a nice battery against my king I do have to be careful could I just play queen f6 looking to trade some pieces off
in the event of queen b8, is that really so dangerous for me? So I'm just going to try to keep him from being too active. After queen b8, I play bishop d2. All right, he's going there. <coughs> Maybe bi bishop d2 now. Finally, my rook is no longer trapped on f8. And he resigned. Great game. Big win over the 1836. Redeeming myself after yesterday's game. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. Sorry if the um, screen was a little dark or if the audio was a little bad early on, but we got through it. Thanks. See you next time.